The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. We are back to Romans, and in chapter 11, Paul mentions Israel stumbling. What does Paul mean by stumble? Then he says fallen. If the nation of Israel has stumbled and fallen, where are they now? We will talk about it today, and we're glad that you're joining us here on Grace in Focus, the radio and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. Find out more about the Grace Evangelical Society and our online seminary by visiting faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Now with today's discussion from Romans 11, here are Catherine Wright and Ken Yates. And we are continuing our study in the book of Romans. For those who have been following these uh, podcasts, you know that there are a lot of interpretive issues (laughs) in the book of Romans that we come to and we have to say, okay, what exactly is Paul talking about? And we're in that section of Romans, chapters 9, 10, and 11, which deal with the nation of Israel. And obviously through church history, this has resulted in a number of different interpretations. What is the future of the nation of Israel? Is God done with the nation of Israel? Has the church replaced the nation of Israel in the plan of God? All these issues are at play here in Romans 9, 10, 11. And if you talk to 10 different theologians, you're probably going to get 11 answers on any particular passage. But I think the overall message of these chapters, 9, 10, and 11, are it's pretty clear. No, God is not done with the nation of Israel. That seems to be the overriding point. And that's very relevant in a contemporary nature, because as we're talking about these things, the Middle East is in upheaval, and the nation of Israel is being threatened. Once again. Once again. (laughs) Mm -hmm. As we look at those things that are going on in the Middle East— Can we say that the nation of Israel there is still a major part of God's plan for the future? Mm -hmm. Now, I think most people in Christendom, most teachers would say, no, Israel is no different than any other nation today. But what Catherine and I are arguing is that, no, those promises that God made in the Old Testament to the nation of Israel are going to be fulfilled. And we're going to argue that is Paul's point in these chapters as well. That's Paul's whole emphasis as we've gone through chapters 9, 10, and 11 is that God's not done with them. And that was true in Paul's day. And it's true in our day. One of the other issues here is this is not a minor thing. Yeah. This is very, very important for how you are going to interpret large sections of the Bible. Well, and it's also going to interpret how you're going to look at the news right now. Yeah, and in the case of the Old Testament prophets, when you when you see all these prophecies of the mm. coming kingdom and how Israel is involved in that coming kingdom, are those going to be literally fulfilled mm-hmm. with the nation of Israel, or is that spiritualized? Do we go to those Old Testament prophecies and say, well, if the nation of Israel had believed in Jesus when he came, then yes, somehow these things would have been fulfilled with the nation of Israel. But since they didn't, and they have rejected the message and Paul's message as well, then the church is going to fulfill these in a spiritual way or in an allegorical way. Mm -hmm. And the same thing when you come to the Gospels, particularly Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you read about this offer of the kingdom to the nation, okay, they rejected it, then is that offer off the table now? Mm -hmm. God says, okay, you all are stiff-necked, rebellious people, So therefore, I'm not going to do that. Or you had your chance, and now I'm going to give it to the church. Plan B. Yes, plan B. You were talking to me just recently about how you're studying in the book of Isaiah, and Mm -hmm. you gave me an example of how people allegorize oh my goodness. this stuff. It impacts so much. It's And it's funny you bring up Isaiah because for those of you that don't know, GES is working on a commentary for the Old Testament right now. We have the Grace New Testament commentary and we are working on the Old Testament and I'm in Isaiah. And in chapter 19, you have the nation of Egypt, how the Lord is going to 
discipline them and that the Assyrians are going to come in and, and destroy them, but that ultimately they will be delivered as well and that they will be in the millennial kingdom. But so many of the commentators see this as just fulfilled in the church. So Egypt becomes the church. That's right. And it's just replacement theology in that sense as well. Egypt is just a picture of the Gentiles that will be saved in the church age. So it's like you're putting up a dartboard. You're throwing a dart, say, kind of Egypt. What yeah. does it mean? And you, on the dartboard, you got the Gentiles, you got the church, you got the blue. And some mm -hmm. people are just throwing a dart at it. Yeah. And it can be whatever you want it to be. Yes. Right. It's funny that we're talking about this because we just got out of a class a couple, like an hour ago on end times. And it was the, a very similar conversation about how do we see the description of Gog and Magog or, you know, what's going to happen at the Lord's return in Revelation. And so much of the theological world sees that just an allegory. Yeah, like there in Revelation 20, mm -hmm. when Jesus comes and they reign with him for a thousand years. That's now. That's right. the church age now. He's right. reigning from heaven now. And right. the first resurrection are believers who died and their souls mm -hmm. are in heaven reigning with Christ now where people like Catherine and people like me and dispensationalists, we say, no, that's literally Christ is yep. going to rule upon the earth for a thousand years. And Israel is going to have a major mm -hmm. role so Egypt kingdom. is really Egypt. <laughs> Jesus's return is really his return. You know, we are literally going to live on the earth. We're saying that the Bible means what it what it says. Yeah. And when it comes to these chapters in Romans 9, 10 and 11, as we're going to see as we start here in verse 11, in chapter 11, that this idea that God has a plan for Israel, because that's obviously what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. Paul says, no, God's still dealing with the nation of Israel. Many are going to say in an allegorical way, well, that's just talking about Jews who believe, who are part of the church. Mm -hmm. But the nation of Israel as an entity or as a corporate thing, God's done with that. Yeah. You know, those promises are not going to be fulfilled to the literal nation. But individuals who are Jews can believe and be a part of the church. Right. And then therefore, that is, that's the only thing that God would say to a Jewish person today or to the Jewish nation. And so they're no different than any other nation. Mm -hmm. People with within any nation can believe and be a part of the church. So it is with the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And there it is. So we get to Romans chapter 11, verse 11. And Paul says, I say then, have they, and this is talking about Israel, stumbled that they should fall. And then he says, Certainly not. And so obviously Paul says, okay, they've stumbled. In, in Paul's day, the nation of Israel has rejected the ministry of John the Baptist, has rejected the ministry of Christ as a whole. Now there are, there are some who have believed, and now they're rejecting Paul's message. Remember when Paul would go on his missionary journeys, he would go into the synagogues first, and he would teach in the synagogues, and over and over again, the Jews persecuted him. So Paul's saying, obviously, the nation of Israel in his day, and by the way, it's the same today, mm -hmm. <laughs> the nation of Israel is not a believing nation. Paul says, have they stumbled to where they have fallen? In other words, God's done with them. And his answer is, certainly not. God is not done with the nation. And the nation as a whole at the end of the tribulation period is going to be a believing nation. Mm -hmm. And so notice what he says in verse 11, but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Ooh, there's a word. Okay. Uh -huh. So Catherine, why don't you tell us <laughs> what does salvation mean in the book of Romans? Well, if you've been following our series, then you already know that we've been arguing that salvation in the book of Romans is deliverance from the wrath of God. And by wrath, we mean the consequences of sin here and now. It's a deliverance here and now for those who call upon the Lord, 
not just believe in him. It's more than just being saved from hell. It's a, it's a salvation from the impact of sin. And certainly the nation of Israel needs that type of deliverance because they are experiencing the wrath of God here and now. So the salvation in the book of Romans begins with Mm -hmm. receiving eternal life and being declared Mm -hmm. righteous by God, by faith in Jesus Christ alone. When I believe in him and I know I have eternal life, I receive eternal life, but I also have been declared righteous by Mm -hmm. God. And that, as we've seen earlier in the book of Romans, means that I have access to him Mm -hmm. and that the spirit dwells within me, Romans 8. And now I can live in such a way through the power of the spirit where I produce spiritual fruit and I no longer have to be enslaved to the power of sin. Mm -hmm. So salvation, or maybe a better word, would be deliverance. Once again, I want to put a plug for Zane Hodges' book, Deliverance from Wrath, Mm -hmm. uh, is what he, the subtitle to his commentary on Romans that you can get at GES website. This now is available to the Gentiles. Because the nation of Israel has rejected this wonderful message, this message now goes out to the Gentile world. And of course, that involves the church. I think... It's so important to point out here, this is obviously more than salvation from hell because now the Gentiles are being offered this type of deliverance. Well, Gentiles were always offered the gift of eternal life. Gentiles could be saved in the Old Testament if we're talking about salvation from hell. Gentiles were saved in the Old Testament in that sense. But now Paul is saying there's a new salvation that's being offered to the Gentiles here that is... It's a different dispensation. And so we have to make a distinction here that this is not just salvation from hell. And that's a great point. This is going out to the Gentile world. And Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. And this God is using to provoke the nation to jealousy. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the nation will look at what's going on in the church and realize when they see it, that these people are living by the power of the Spirit, that it would see them, that this is available to them. And this is something, this church thing was not revealed in the Old Testament. I also think there's a little bit of irony going on here that the nation was supposed to provoke Gentiles to the God of Israel, to the Holy One, that they were to be this. And may I say, and more than and just more to than, believe in Exactly, him, but, right. right. And now, now that the Gentiles are, are to provoke and bring unbelieving Jews to faith, but also have more than that also to have this deliverance. So once again, we see this word salvation here. And even though most Baptists would just say, oh, let's talk about going to heaven. Hopefully you're challenged to see that as a little bit more. And it's all because of the grace of God. And remember until the next episode, keep keep grace grace in focus. We have all kinds of free resources available for you. It's all designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of Scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Our team is really great about answering questions, comments, and feedback. If you've got some, we hope to hear from you. Let me give you our email address so you can do just that. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, continuing in chapter 11, Paul mentions Gentiles and Israel's future. Please join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.